integral minus infinity to infinity x of tau into transformation of del of t minus tau means output corresponding to del of t minus tau. What do you mean by del? Del is impulse. Del is known as impulse input. So output corresponding to del means it is called the impulse response, isn't it? Output corresponding to impulse is called the impulse response. Is called the inverse response. And inverse response is denoted by h of t. Inverse response is denoted by h of t. So, transformation of del of t minus tau is nothing but the output of the system corresponding to the shifted impulse. What is this called as? This is called as shifted impulse because there is a shift there. So, output corresponding to the shift. Shifted inverse is called as shifted inverse response. So we need to represent like this h of t minus tau. This is called as shifted inverse response. Now you see this equation and kindly cross check with your definition. Definition is output of a LTI system. Continuous time LTI system can be called as the weighted superposition of shifted impulse response. Del of t minus tau is just shifted impulse. But once you transform the del of t minus tau, it will become h of t minus tau. And this is called as impulse response, which uh, shifted impulse response. X of tau is your weight. Integral is your superposition. Okay. So the definition of I of t or output of a system can be called as the weighted superposition of shifted impulse response. So this is the equation for y of t. So when you compare your discrete time system and uh, continuous time system, you can see that for a discrete time system, output is given by sigma k varies from minus infinity to infinity x of k into x of n minus k as we have discussed earlier and we have done the problems also. Now we are there to find the output of a continuous time system by using convolution process but it is not called as convolution sum. This is called as convolution sum because we have a summation over there. But if you take a continuous time system output is given by integral of x of tau into x of t minus tau. This equation is called as convolution integral. So convolution sum is applicable for a discrete time system and convolution integral is applicable for a uh, continuous time system. Formula is same. Means sigma is just, re concept is same. You have just replaced sigma with integral and then with the top. That's all. Okay, so we are there to perform integration in this particular uh, case. Whereas in the previous case, we have performed the uh, geometric progressions summation, isn't it? But now we are not going to perform any summation or geometric progression here because we are there to find the integral of two products. I hope this is clear. So please put it in a box. It is very important these two equations and you must know the difference between convolution sum and convolution integral. Convolution is a method or an approach to find the output of the LTI system. Either you may use convolution sum or you may use convolution integral that depends upon whether it is CT or whether it is DT. And from these two equations, it is understood that output is nothing but the weighted sum of impulse response for a discrete time system. Whereas for a continuous system, output is nothing but the weighted superposition or weighted integral, you can say, weighted superposition of shifted impulse response. That is what is called a convolution integral. Any doubts? And mathematically, this is the equation, but symbolically we can write y of t is equal to x of t convolution star x of t. Star is known as convolution operator. This is a symbolic way of representing the convolution. Mathematical equation is this thing, whatever I have mentioned in that box. But symbolically, I can represent x of t star x of t. That's it. 
any doubts i hope you have taken down this moving to the problem take down the question consider a continuous time lti system consider a continuous time lti system with impulse response with impulse response h of t is equal to u of t h of t is equal to u of t and input x of t equal to input x of t is equal to e to the power minus a t u of t e to the power minus a t u of t for a greater than 0 For a greater than zero, find the output of the system. Find the output of the system. Output of the system is y of t. So you need to find y of t. Condition is given a greater than zero. Now you tell me, uh, Lokesh Biswas, you tell me. How this x of t will look like? Is it an exponentially growing signal or exponentially decaying signal? Decaying, sir. Why? Ah, uh, there is a minus Why? at e. There is a minus at e to the power. There is there is a minus at the power, and provided a is greater than zero. So it will be negative only, right? If a was less than zero, means minus of minus will become positive. In that case, it should be exponentially increasing. But here a is positive, but here you have a negative. So negative of positive is negative only. Here, yeah? therefore, x of t is a exponentially decaying signal. And what is the value of x of t at t is equal to zero, Lavanya? What is the value of x of t at t equal to zero? So at, uh, you just put t equal to zero and tell me the answer. No, no, no. You just substitute t equal to zero and tell me the value at t. So this, this is the expression, t right? T so what is x of zero? So it will become one. E to the power. Yeah, e to the power zero is one. Correct, correct. Yes, very good, very good. So it will start from one and it will decrease exponentially. As I shown in the graph. Now, Nidhi, you need to tell me: Do you have any signal in the left side? Uh, no, sir. Why? Um. Why? You just focus on this expression. E raised to minus a t u of t. Sir, so, uh, a is greater than zero. What is u of t? Have... No, 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 no. That can be come from here only. A is greater than zero means it will come from here only, and it will be exponentially decreasing. But as of now, I am not drawing any signals on the left side of the vertical axis. Why so? Any others? But because u of t is different from zero. Yes, because u of t is only defined from zero to infinity. So since it is not defined in the negative values of time, you can have the signal into zero is zero. So you don't have anything in the negative axis of the time. Nidhi, you understood, right? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, u of t will exist only from zero to infinity. So anything into zero will become zero only. So you don't have any signals in the left axis. So this is a plot for x of t. Now I would like to plot h of t. H of t is given as u of t only. So u of t, as you know, it is existing only from zero to infinity, and its value is continuously one. 
See, please don't plot discrete. We are dealing with continuous now. Means you need to plot continuous signals, not discrete signals, as I have mentioned in the previous cases. This is a discrete, so this is a continuous time system that we are now analyzing. So as of now, I have plotted X of T and H of T in figure number two. Now you know the expression to find y of t. y of t is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity x of tau into h of t minus tau d tau. So to perform this operation, I need h of t minus tau. But as of now, I have h of t with me. Correct? So I need to take h of minus tau and then I need to plot h of minus tau plus t. Correct? First, I will draw h of minus tau. Then I need to proceed for h of minus tau plus t. That is nothing but your h of t minus tau. So first, all of you draw h of minus t. That is just take the reversal. After drawing h of minus tau, you will draw h of minus tau plus t. This is nothing but your h of t minus tau. So you are shifting towards right because you are doing h of minus tau plus t. So you need to shift towards where? Towards right. See, this is h of t. h of t means you can uh, replace with the tau, tau also. That is h of tau because we need h of tau. So we will just replace t with the tau and we will plot. That's all. Again, x of you can plot x of tau only. Don't plot x of t, you plot x of tau. Okay, replace t with the tau. So we have plotted x of tau, we have plotted h of tau, then we have plotted h of minus tau. Then we need to shift the given signal h of minus tau towards right side by t e units. Sorry, by uh, t e units. So how it will look like? This will come over here. Correct? So it will be coming from minus infinity and ending with t. But you don't know the value of t. t is not not. So we need to assume certain cases and then proceed to find the answer. That I will discuss in the next class. So as of now, we have plotted x of tau and h of t minus tau. Because as per the equation of convolution, we need x of tau and h of t minus tau that I have plotted. Now we need to find the limits of the integral and then proceed the integration and get the answer that I will teach in the next class. Hope it is clear for you. If any doubts, please feel free to ask. I hope it is clear. Can I wind up? Okay, thank you.